So there's some important tools that you want to want to get familiar with if you're working with jQuery or JavaScript. <clears throat> the first one is going to be the Internet the Internet Explorer developer tools. I, I can't tell you how many SharePoint developers I know refuse to use Internet Explorer. They they want to use Chrome. They want to use Firefox. They want to use whatever. Um, your users are most likely going to be using an Internet Explorer because your 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 odds are. Um, odds are you're a Microsoft shop. That you're going to have a, a mix of browsers. And the the other really important thing is that um, SharePoint actually renders quite a few things differently in Internet Explorer than it does in other browsers. Um, even though SharePoint, even tw even SharePoint 2013 is considered to be fully cross-browser compatible, there are some controls and some pages that are rendered differently if the server Understands that it's talking to Internet Explorer, um, and you know they're, they're, some of those some of those places are very obscure. Some of them are very common, like a like a drop down in a in a list form. Uh, it will be displayed differently if there are 20 or more items in in Internet Explorer than than it will be in uh, any other browser. So using Internet Explorer as one of your development tools is very important because the document object model may be different, and you need to understand where those where those differences are. So, it's, IE's developer tools show that Internet Explorer's view of SharePoint's pages. Some, of, like I said, some of the pages or controls can be rendered differently than other browsers. So it's the true browser. I didn't, couldn't come up with what the right word there was, but true to what SharePoint actually wants to render. Uh, so if there's anything sophisticated about a control, it's going to happen in IE more likely than it will in other browsers. Um, one of the reasons I like uh, Internet Explorer's developer toolbar is that trace styles um, sort of sub-tab uh, is something that I find very useful that the other browser tools that I've looked at don't have. So let me briefly show you uh, what the Internet Explorer developer toolbars look like. This is my demo site. This is just the home site. We'll be looking at some of these pages and stuff. So to get the Internet Explorer developer tools, I just hit F12. And it opens up down here. And you see I've got some errors over here in the console. I'm not quite sure why. Um, I can see the, the HTML markup on the left side. Um, I'm just going to refresh the page to get rid of some of those console messages. Sometimes the uh, uh, some of the uh, um, Ajax stuff gets a little twisted up. There are bugs in SharePoint 2013. Uh, I haven't figured out what some of them are yet. But I think there are some memory leaks in some of the scripting and Ajax stuff. So uh, at any given time, you can see the, the document object model over here. Um, SharePoint's, I'm sorry, Internet Explorer's developer toolbar does not show you a live version of the DOM unless you refresh it. This is the refresh button. So I refresh the page. A lot of stuff happened with script. When I go like this, there's, there are things happening with script to make that movement happen. And um, if, if I don't refresh the page and I want to see what's going on with that particular page element, I'm not going to be looking at the document object model that's live there. That's something that's different about uh, Internet Explorer's developer toolbar. So this refresh key is very important. And then you can look at the current state of this thing. Um, so if you ever can't select something in, in, um, in Internet Explorer, it's probably because you haven't refreshed the DOM. The other thing I said that was useful is this trace styles thing. So we see all the styles that are that are applied to that particular object. We can see what's inherited and why and things like that. The trace style view sort of sort of flips that on its side and shows us what styles are applied to that particular element and where they come from. So you can see, I mean, I haven't done any special styling here, so everything's coming from the core V15 CSS, which is SharePoint's out of the box CSS. But we can actually see where each individual style is coming from. If there were multiple CSS files in play, we'd see which one sort of wins out and, and what the final one is. This is very nice to be able to see because when you want to figure out sort of what the precedence is, when you know the cascading part of cascading style sheets, uh, this this view in particular is very helpful. So I'll I'll often use Internet Explorer's developer toolbar for some of my development. That was a very quick demo. The other, the other tool that I use is the Firebug add-on for Firefox. Um, so this Firefox is, 
probably the second most popular browser for end users that I run into. Uh, you know, most, like I said, most developers want to use Chrome, but very few end users I find use Chrome. Uh, in most large enterprise environments, it's just not one of the one of the supported browsers in general, but it's often there a lot. So the Firebug add-on is something that you do have to download separately from Firefox. It's a very quick install. You look at it, look for it in the add-ins for uh, in the, the add-ins menu for Firefox. Current version is 1.11. something, and uh, it you know it looks somewhat similar to what you see with Internet Explorer's developer toolbar, but it does some other things and does some things better and some things not as well, I think. So, like I said, some markup will be different than in IE, so you have to understand that distinction. You, know, you really have to use IE as sort of your gold standard browser, depending on what you're working on, of course. Um, I find that Firebug and Firefox are better for script debugging and looking at net traffic. So, where, where we're looking at the script tab and the net tab at the top, I find that those are, those are strengths in Firefox. Um, as well as the fact that it lets us see the live DOM at all times. There's no refresh button. So when you're looking at the DOM in Firefox, you're always seeing what's, what's the current live vector object model. And let me quickly flip over to Firefox here. Same page. Uh, I'll just refresh it in case anything odd, odd, has, changed, odd has happened while I've been talking. I'm going to hit F12, which is also uh, the same key as in IE. There's a little bit of uh, script that I was testing with earlier. Here I can see the document object model, and uh, you can see this is a very similar look to what I was seeing in Internet Explorer, but because it's a live, uh, a live view of, of the page, if you, if you watch while, I'm, while I sort of slide up on this thing, you'll see the stuff turns yellow. Those are, those are elements that are actually changing while the DOM is being manipulated. So it's very helpful to be able to see that if you've got some script running. Maybe you're trapping on the, you know, the hover event like this is. And so you can actually see what happens to those attributes. Um, that's something you can't do in Internet Explorer's developer toolbar. Um, the other thing that is great is the script debugger. So I have to reload with that tab active. And it's just much easier to step through script in, um, in this environment than it is in, in IE. So, if you, if you really want to be stepping through script, yes, you can debug script. It's actually not as hard as, it seems, as, as a lot of people think it is. Um, it's just something that you need to learn and get used to. Um, and then the, the final thing is this net tab. I find that this is more useful than the IE one, which you sort of have to turn on and off, and uh, it doesn't show you as much information. So uh, I have, I'm only showing JavaScript files here. So these are all of the JavaScript files coming down from the from the server on that one page load. It's a lot of JavaScript. You'll notice that uh, you know there are a good 20, 30, 40, I don't, and, and, oh, I'm sorry, 46 requests just to get JavaScript from, from the server for this one particular page. Now you see that most of them are not, most of the, uh, the files have not been modified, if not all of them. Some of, the, some of them are rendered on the fly. So for instance, this one is one that, that was built by the server in particular for this, this page load, so it actually had to download it. The rest of them it didn't have to download. Because I'm on Office 365 here on SharePoint Online, some things are coming from the CDN at SharePoint Online, so a lot of these files are, are, are hosted differently on Office 365 than they would be if you were on premises. And you can actually see where they come from, see how long they took to load. So this is a nice way to look at uh, you know, what what, what's slowing down my page, and how, how, can I, uh, how can I work on that? If you hover over things, you see a lot of very specific things about the actual process that it took to, uh, to get that data to the, to the browser. 